Okay guys, uh, here is your first video for module two. Uh, this module is a little shorter than the last module. So we're gonna talk about uh, cell reproduction. In this one, we're gonna talk about mitosis with your normal cells, meiosis with your uh, sex cells. So to start off, for mitosis, for mitosis, we are going to, in the end, create two cells. And these cells are going to be identical to one another, okay? So, with them being identical, all right, every single cell has the same exact DNA as the parent cell. In other words, it's asexual reproduction, all right? So this is asexual. And along with this, guys, we're gonna have only one cell division. That's how we end up with two cells. Okay. I'm gonna come back to mitosis in a second, but just to compare it to meiosis, we're gonna have four cells in meiosis. These are gonna be genetically different. Genetically different. Okay. Um, meiosis is still asexual, but we're gonna talk about how it's a little bit different than mitosis um, later on. But for this one, we're gonna have two cell divisions. Now, for human cells, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. When we talk about 23 pairs, if you do 23 times, just like a pair of shoes, you choose, you got two pair, or I'm sorry, two shoes. Um, 23 times two is 46. So that's why we have 46 chromosomes, but each chromosome we have two uh, copies of it. So for mitosis, these are our normal cells. We want each one of these cells to have 46 chromosomes. So we call them diploid. Di meaning two. What this means is we have two copies of each chromosomes in these cells. Now for meiosis, again, these are your sex cells. We don't want to have 46 chromosomes in each one. Reason being is these are gonna be sperm and egg. We want them to each for humans have 23. That way, whenever you know you have a kid, you're going to get 23 chromosomes from mom, 23 chromosomes from dad. When fertilization happens, 23 plus 23 is 46, and that's the first cell of the baby. So for meiosis, we want these cells to be haploid, okay? Now, obviously, when we say haploid, we want one of each chromosome. We don't want like, you know, two of chromosome one and then none of whatever other chromosome. No, we want one copy of each chromosome from each parent and then everything is good genetically, all right? So those are our main differences between mitosis and meiosis. If we come over to our cell cycle here, all right, we're gonna start talking about how mitosis and how meiosis occur. This whole section here, the largest section, cells spend most of their time in this. This is called interphase. Okay, interphase. And there's three stages of interphase. There's G1, there's S, and there's G2. This over here <coughs> is gonna be called our M phase, or mitosis. This is when the cell actually divides. So to start off with G1, we just had a cell divide. What's happening after the cell divides during G1 is it's simply going to grow, okay? And that's all that's happening during the G1 phase. The S phase, this stands for synthesis, all right? What we're doing during this phase, because we're gonna end up with two cells. We want each cell to be diploid, to have 46 chromosomes. But here's the problem. If we start off with a cell with 46 chromosomes and we make two cells out of it, well, for dividing those chromosomes, you know, 46 divided in half is 23 and 23. That, that's not what we want. We want each one cell for mitosis to have 46 chromosomes. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to replicate our DNA during S phase. And what that replication does, it makes us no longer in that particular cell have 46 chromosomes. Instead, we now have 92 for a short period of time. All right, and that's what happens during the, the S phase. And that's to ensure that at the end of mitosis, those cells have the correct number of chromosomes. So after that, going into G2, the cell is going to continue to grow and it's gonna go through checkpoints in order to make sure, hey, is that DNA good? Is, did everything get copied correctly? All right, and that's what happens during G2. 
After that, we're gonna to start to go into our parts of mitosis. So I'm gonna erase this so we can start to draw some things over here. Okay. To start off, we're gonna start off with prophase. Now, I'm not going to draw the 96 chromosomes that are in there. That's going to take entirely too long. So I'm just gonna do one or two chromosomes just so you guys can actually see what's going on. So to start off with prophase, so we're gonna have our cell membrane. I'm gonna use an animal cell, all right? What's gonna happen here is we are going to have our nucleus and our nuclear membrane is actually going to start to disappear, all right? So I'm gonna say nucleus disappears. And during the time of interphase, our chromosomes are actually not visible at this time. There are in the form of something called chromatin, it's very long strings of DNA. But what's gonna happen here during prophase is our chromosomes are going to start to coil into that normal X shape that you guys uh, normally see. So we're gonna say the chromosomes condense, and that's so they become visible. So we're gonna see some X's in here, okay? I made four. Okay. So that is our first step, that's our prophase. Second step, we're gonna have metaphase. So during metaphase, there's our cell, um, the nucleus is now gone. So what's gonna happen is these chromosomes are going to line up in the middle of the cell. And on each end of the cell, we're gonna have a centriole. If you remember, these are present in animal cells. Those are our centrioles. Okay? And what's gonna happen is that centriole, essentially Spider-Man, is going to throw out something called a spindle fiber. And that spindle fiber is going to connect to the middle of each of our chromosomes, just like that. Okay? It's like Spider-Man throwing out his webbing. All right. And that is our main thing of metaphase, all right? So our spindle fibers, Attached to chromosomes. In middle of cell. Sorry, a little too close. Sorry with the central relay what over here. There we go. Okay. Um, after that, what's going to happen is we're going to move into anaphase. So for anaphase, which is our third phase of mitosis, still going to have our cell, in this case my wonky circle. But what's going to happen here is we're gonna, still going to have our centrioles on each side, and it's essentially going to be now like a fishing pole, where it's going to be reeling that spindle fiber in. and in reeling that spindle fiber inward, what's gonna happen is the chromosomes, okay, are actually going to break apart into chromatids. So we're gonna have them breaking apart into half of an X, okay? This ensures that half of the chromosomes are going to one side of the cell, half of them are going to the other side of the cell. And that's pretty much what happens for anaphase. Our last one is telophase. There's our circle there, okay? Now, I drew it like this at first, okay? But what I'm gonna do here, guys, is instead of doing uh, telophase and cytokinesis in two different stages, I'm just gonna make them into one stage. So at the beginning of telophase, it is gonna look like this. But toward the end of telophase, we're going to see something like this, okay, where we're going to start to get two new cells. So what happened was our chromosomes are completely now to each side. We have this little thing right here for animal cells, it's called a cleavage furrow. Um, and what it does is it pinches inward until the two cells break apart and that kind of happens with cytokinesis. For plant cells, it's a cell plate. It's essentially, it comes down and slices the cells in two. Um, that way they keep their square shape. But 
also during cytokinesis and telophase, we're going to start to get our nucleus reform. And after this, it's gonna go back into G1 after it's completely split during cytokinesis. Um, the cytoplasm is going to be distributed equally throughout our two cells, and they're gonna be tiny at this time, and they're gonna go into G1, and they're gonna to start to grow, all right? And that's pretty much it for, for mitosis. Here's your four main pictures of mitosis. These are the main things that happen during that, all right? Now, the difference between this and our meiosis, everything is essentially the same, um, except for a few changes. But interphase is identical, all right? Everything with interphase is the same. The difference is we are gonna go through two cell divisions. So we're gonna have prophase one, we're gonna have metaphase one, um, anaphase one, telophase one, and then we're gonna go right into, without um, DNA replication again, we're gonna go right into prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two. So to start off, we have prophase one. Okay. Now, I'm gonna draw the cell here. The nuclear membrane is starting to disappear, okay? On the side of this cell, I'm gonna draw what the chromosomes may look like. I'm gonna use two different colors for this. Actually, no, I'll use four different colors for this. That, now we'll do black for our last one. Now there's a really important part of prophase one that contributes to us not looking like our parents, and that's called crossing over. So this is when crossing over occurs. What happens here is we are gonna take a piece of one chromosome, swap it with a piece of another chromosome. So if we're going to, if these are homologous chromosomes, um, we're going to have now pieces of one on the other and vice versa. Okay. So you guys can see how I switched the, the leg up with the green and the black one. And then I will do the same for the top one. And that's what we look like at the end of prophase one, All right? Moving on to metaphase one. Everything here on out, guys, is going to be the same as it was in mitosis, but you have to put the one or the number two afterwards. If you do not, then it's not meiosis, it's mitosis, okay? So mitosis is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Meiosis is prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. They're completely different names, all right? But I'm not gonna draw the same colors, guys. Just, you know, it, it, they would be, they would all be these colors, they would stay that, okay? But again, for metaphase, the same thing is gonna happen as in mitosis. Uh, during metaphase, we're gonna have our centrioles on the side. Our spindle fibers are going to attach here, okay? All right. Now, since we are doing uh, two divisions, right, there's gonna be one, one very minute difference in this is that instead of them lining up as chromosomes, they're gonna line up as something called tetrads for metaphase one. So they're essentially gonna be overlapping one another, these chromosomes, all right? And that's after, you know, obviously um, during interphase, we have our S phase where DNA gets replicated. So they're overlapping, and that's why we call them tetra means four. It's essentially four um, chromatids overlapping one another, all right? So that's metaphase. Now for anaphase one, we're still gonna have our cell. There's our nice cell membrane there. Okay. Um, and what's gonna happen here is we're gonna have still our centrioles, they're going to be pulling things inward. But instead of them pulling apart the chromosomes, they're actually just pulling apart the, uh, the tetrads. So we're gonna have X's on each side here. Okay. 
and that's our anaphase. And then lastly, telophase one. Still got our cell membrane there. Okay. Um, our chromosomes are going to be completely on each side here. Okay. And it's going to result in the end in I'm making them small just so we have enough room. We're going to have our two cells. Okay. So after that, each one of these cells is going to go through another um, division of meiosis. So we're going to have four all together. One, two, three, four. Okay. And these are going to be our end results, but I, I'm not going to draw both. Um, I'm just going to draw, take one of these cells and show you how it goes through prophase two, you know, metaphase two, all that stuff. So for prophase two, again, I'm just using one of these cells. Crossing over already occurred for prophase one. We do not need it again to occur for prophase two. All right. Once it happens once, we don't need any more genetic variation. Um, there's no reason to complicate things. We'll keep it nice and simple. The more times we complicate things, the more mistakes we can make. So no crossing over happens. Crossing over only happens in prophase one. And that's very important. All right, this is when crossing over happens. All right, so next we have metaphase two. All right, nothing is different here. We're gonna have, once again, our centrioles coming in. Okay. Our chromosomes now are going to line up in the middle. We don't have the tetras anymore. Okay. And they're going to attach. All right. Next, anaphase two, the centrioles once again are going to pull the spindle fibers in. just like they did earlier and everything is separated okay. now at the end going into telophase 2 and cytokinesis 2 we are now going to have four cells okay all of these cells are going to be haploid they're all going to have 23 chromosomes now for women they're going to have one very large cell, um, and that's going to be the egg. And then they're going to have three polar bodies, which are essentially very small cells. So women at the end, they're going to have one that's the egg. And then, you know, pretty much all the cytoplasm and everything are going to go to this cell. But for guys, okay. Sorry, I can't make my tails roll. Good here. They're going to have for sperm, they're all going to be the same size because men produce a lot more sperm compared to like you know women's eggs. We don't want women to produce more than you know one egg at one time because you know if, if all those eggs get fertilized, she's going to be pregnant with a whole lot of babies. All right. So those are your main things for mitosis and meiosis, guys. Um, I gave you a very short you know um, review of them. I didn't go in as much depth as we went over in class. But just make sure you know mitosis is diploid, 46 chromosomes per cell uh, for humans. Meiosis is haploid, 23 cho chromosomes per cell uh, for humans. Make sure you know that, you know, we've got one egg, three polar ball bodies for men, sperm, four. Um, and then mitosis, guys, we only got two cells out of it, all right? One more thing, make sure, very, very, very important, crossing over, it happens during prophase one and it produces all of our genetic diversity. That way we do not look like our parents, okay? That's a big thing. All right, all right guys, hopefully this helped. Um, our next video will be on genetics.